May God forgive this land. So we need to make progress. Why am I starting this way? You are talking about progress. Progress must be in the right direction. That somebody said that moving from bedroom to a parlor inside one house, is it not progress? Have you, have you left the house? Progress should not be like what happened many years ago with one of my friends. That's how I was in the seminary. I didn't know Lagos very much. That was in the 80s. And this, my friend, went together. We wanted to get to Obanikoro. How many of us Lagos know Obanikoro? Uh -huh. you, you look at progress now. You listen to me, oh, the progress. Progress. We entered bus at Ojo Lego, we are going to Obanikoro. Then we move, 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 move. We got a point. What is that uh, bus station? Bus stop before Pangroof. What is the name of that bus station? We got there, my friend said, ah, Obanikoro, we passed it, though. They were past Obanikur. I, I, I thought that the scene is still in front. He said, no, we are past it. We came down from bus. At that bus. Uh, look at Obanikur from there. How long is it? How far is it from there? We started trekking back. Oh. Trek, 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 trek. <laughs> I got tired. He got tired. He didn't say, ah, this thing looks like we are past it, you know. Looks like we are past it, you know. But I told you before. So we then, he just followed his pride. We went, we went to ask him, please. Uh, where is Obanikoro? The man said, is me, where you're coming from? The thing is that way. Shy. So, we have to enter boss again. Look at foolishness, foolishness. <laughs> we pay twice. So, by the time enter boss again, we now move from uh, that. I've forgotten the bus stop. As a bus stop, we enter boss again. Then we, uh, we pass that place. Pass Bangrove. I said, look, you see now. You see, we're almost where we're going. But look at we turn. <laughs> so, when you're making progress, is it forward or backward? You must be sure you are making the right kind of uh, progress. Ephesians chapter 2. Unfortunately, the outline, you have that line on the program booklet, pages 6 to... Well, I'm not going to go through everything there. Um, I think pages 6 to 13 or so. Yeah, to 14. You have, that's where you have a uh, study outline. I'm not going to talk about everything there. But I want us to read the passage. That were, where the study comes from. Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 14 to verse 22. Ephesians 2, 14 to 22. I want to read from the New King James Version. We have Paul says, and I read, For he himself is our peace, who has made both one, and has broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, that is, the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace. And that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. And he came and preached peace to you who were afar off and to those who were near. For through him we both, we both have access by one spirit to the Father. Now therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building, being fitted together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. Praise the Lord. Now our team, general team, is moving forward, praying and walking for peace and progress. But the topic for this study is actually Jesus' way of peacemaking. Can we say together? Jesus' way of what? Peacemaking. Now, I said in the introduction there, the theme is very relevant. It's very relevant to, uh, to us in our time here. And uh, our commission leadership, by coming up with this theme, they are telling us we should move forward. And we're moving forward. But to move forward, you need peace. And for you to make progress, you need peace. Without peace, you can't have genuine progress. But we're, talking, we're not talking about man-made peace. Jesus said, I give you peace, not as the way, not the way the world gives. There's a difference with the, the way God, Jesus gives peace. is different from the way the world uh, gives peace. So, if for you to have progress, there will be peace. And not only that, not only should we be praying, but we should also do what? Work. James said, faith without work is what? Dead. And this is where I want to address many of us. For instance, before the last election, how many of us prayed for before the, this election? How many of us prayed? 
Now, but if you now bring it down, how many of us voted? Some of us did not vote. And I'll tell you, my child, if you say you are praying for uh, a free, a free and fair election and you, and you didn't vote, it's a contradiction. It's a contradiction. The church, people must rise up. Stop saying that you are praying. Prayer is not enough alone. In politics, politics is not church. When you have prayed, you must walk in accordance with the faith you have that God is hearing you. When it gets to politics, especially democracy, it's one man, one uh, vote. So if, if, if you have your vote, ballot paper, if you have a vote, sorry, your, your, what do you call PVC, that's what we call it now. PVC, make a big, big, big mountain out of a mohi. Now, you have your PVC, and then it's okay, that day I'm not going to vote. Then some other people will vote. And when they're voting the wrong kind of people, whether you like it or not, the policies they come up with will affect you, it will affect me. Amen? So we must pray. We must also do what? Hello? We must pray and we must do what? Walk. Tell your neighbor you must walk. I'm not hearing you. Say it where? Well. Now, what is peace? Now, there are different ways of looking at peace. But the dif different uh, meanings are given there. For example, literally it means a state of peace in contrast to armed conflict or war. In other words, a situation where there is no, no war, there is no conflict, armed conflict. That we say that the way, there is peace in that place. But biblical peace is beyond that. It can also mean an agreement or an accord between two sets of people who are quarreling before. That peace also means a greeting of farewell that corresponds to the Hebrew word shalom. Uh, the Hebrews have a word greeting. They say shalom. That's a way of pronouncing peace on you. That word shalom is very rich in meaning. Well, it has basically, it means total well-being in every area of life. In harmony with God, in harmony with your fellow human beings, and in harmony with the environment. Also, peace also means a, a religious disposition characterized by inner rest and harmony, marked by serenity and freedom from anxiety. Now, a state of reconciliation with God. And very important, number five, an end-time condition to be brought by, about by Jesus' consummation of a redemptive work of salvation. In other words, there's an aspect of it that we brought to bear when Jesus shall come back. And that time, he said uh, that, that uh, there will be real peace. And this, this uh, is a state of spiritual, physical, and material well-being. Both personal and communal. And it's a relationship characterized by harmony. If you're here, for instance, within yourself, do you have peace? Your body, your soul, and your, and your mind, are they together? Some of you here, you, are not, you don't have peace inside of you. You don't have peace. You are full of anxiety. Tension all over the place. And I pray that the Lord of peace will give you peace in Jesus' name. Whatever is causing you that anxiety, that tension, that you are not enjoying the, the, the fullness or the peace of God uh, for you and for me, God will cause you to experience it in Jesus' name. What about progress? We talked about progress must be in the right direction. Because if, if, I'm, if I'm moving like this now, am I not making progress? But I'm going how? Backwards. I'm not moving forward. Now, progress has been defined in various ways. For example, a movement toward a goal or to a further or higher stage. Advancement in general. Growth or development. Continuous improvement. The development of an individual or society in a direction considered more beneficial than and superior to the previous level. And of course, forward or onward uh, movement. That's, that's progress. That's progress. Real progress, when it happens, you will see it. We can then see that progress has a lot of uh, synonyms. Movement, advancement, growth, development. It could be spiritual, political, cultural, economic, intellectual, material, and or even technological. Sorry, uh, the man has gone. Uh, I saw you when he made a statement. Uh, our global mission board director. He made a statement that I hope he understood what he was saying. I was, he's my friend. I, I will I'll talk to him later. He said I was born before technology. Is that correct? There has never been a generation without technology. If you are saying modern technology, then I will understand. I will tell him it is not. He was not born before modern technology. Because you are not born before technology. Amen? For instance, I want to ask, as a nation, are we making progress politically? Hello? Are we making progress? Huh? Oh, some, <laughs> somebody said somehow. Eh? 